2019. I'm not ashamed to say this, my, our father has been incarcerated. One way we wanted to do that was taking over the real estate game. I used to have really bad anxiety. Yeah. I didn't, it's to the point where I just curled up in a ball and just, you know, secluded myself from everyone. Hey there, so I'm pretty excited. I'm on my way to go meet Ty, uh, Ty Hampton, uh, YouTube channel Ty Speaks. We're meeting at probably one of the most underutilized places in America that exists in every town, which is a library. 2% of people own library cards. It's a wealth of information that so many people just don't take advantage of, but it's totally looking forward to seeing him. I just got our first interaction ever. Welcome to the interview between me and Ty Speaks. What's going on, this, guys? We just met for the first time ever, <laughs> and I discovered he's almost as tall as me. I did not see that one coming. So my first question for you is, what made you choose to work on the projects that you have? One being the YouTube channel, and then real estate. Initially, it was called Mass Mind Shift. So if you look at my videos from the past, it says MMS. I think I've seen that before. Yeah, so Mass Mind Shift was a group that me and my best friend started and it originally was supposed to be like a group that gonna find like-minded individuals mm -hmm. and just keep adding to our group so the whole point was like we wanted to influence and inspire other people and we wanted to do that through groups and I had so many ideas and that's how the YouTube channel started it came down to commitment my friend just wasn't there when I wanted to make when we wanted to make videos because our, our plan was to push one out every week and eventually I just told him I was like hey man like if you're not gonna be here for this, then I'm just gonna do it myself. And I changed the name to Ty Speaks. And at the same time, when I'm putting out videos, not only am I trying to inspire someone else, but it's also like another message for, for me. Yeah. Because I never really grew up with someone to mentor me or you know to give me inspiration or motivation to keep going. So it's sort of one not only for other people but for myself as well. Yeah, one of my favorite videos I've made in recent time was titled I Am a Hypocrite. Yeah. And it was just like calling myself out and outing myself to the public so that I could start acting the way that I would expect myself to act. Exactly. That's that's exactly one of the reasons why I do it cuz I found myself when I first started I would just put out messages just to put them out. Yeah. And then like here you said like I'm a I'm a hypocrite like how am I gonna share a message with someone if I can't even take my own advice? Yeah, That's where it came into play, where not only am I making these vi um, messages and videos for other people, but I'm making it for myself too. And what got me into real estate, me and my brother. Now I'm curious, because I've never actually met Tom in person, but okay. I got in contact with him through Vima. Yep. In Vima, I think we've all learned a pretty solid mindset of like, not having to work because you have to, but working because you want to someday, exactly. and building residual and or passive income. I think that whole mindset, I know that that's how I got that mindset, and then uh, reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, and reading Tim Ferriss' Four Hour Work Week. Yep. That was how I kind of got into the whole idea of real estate and passive income. Is that similar exactly. for you? That's exactly what it was. First book I ever read, first self-development book I read was Business of the 21st Century. Yeah. Oh. Then um, Robert Kiyosaki too, right? Yep. Then Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's when I got into a lot of network marketing. Yeah. And I don't know if you know um, Zendio? No. Zend Travel? It's fairly new, but that's the first business I joined yeah. when I got involved with network marketing. I learned a lot, it helped me get comfortable on the phone. Eventually I left because I know it wasn't for me. Yeah, you talked recently about learning to be comfortable being uncomfortable. When yes, you're definitely. I That's something I challenge myself to do every day. Yeah. Whether it be going on a roller coaster, going out of your way to speak to someone that you've never met before, mm -hmm. or something like this. I usually, I would have been uncom uncomfortable because I've never seen you before in person. Yeah. And uh, But I was like, hey, you know, challenge yourself, you know, go out and meet someone, a like-minded individual like yourself and have a good time. Yeah. So, that's what it was. And then in regards to real estate, me and my brother wanted to create a legacy for our name because our father, I'm not ashamed to say this, my, our father has been incarcerated for the majority of his life. Yeah. And that's what me and my brother were known for growing up in Fitchburg. It's like, oh, his dad's in jail. And me and my brother's plan was to rebuild our name along with our father. 
Even yeah. though he's still in prison, we, he's still like-minded like me and my brother. Probably even on higher level. So it was a, he made a mistake early in life? And yeah, it was just his adolescent years when he was younger. There's just a lot of stuff he was caught up in, like in the streets and stuff. Yeah. And um, he realizes that now we want to rebuild our family, we want to rebuild our name. And one way we wanted to do that was taking over the real estate game. One of our lifetime goals is to create a $22 billion company in real estate. Why 22 billion and by when? 22 billion because we wanted our company's net worth to be 20 billion and then we wanted, we decided our own personal net worth to be a billion each. 22 billion just because we've done a lot of research on other real estate guys who have been very successful in the field. Yep. And it seems that's what the number was around. For people, like where people are comparatively to where you want to be? Yeah, like very successful, is, especially with real estate, was in the billions range. Yeah, you said in one of your, your goals videos, the goal is not just a number, it's a date, exact, time, it, place, etc. Exactly, and this, like I said, lifetime, we're gonna be doing this our entire life. Yeah. So, me and my brother decided like we wanna hit our $22 billion mark at 60. At age 60? Yeah, and then from there, keep building and keep building. You guys are both early 20s, right? Yeah, my brother's 22, I'm 19. Okay. So, I'll be 20 in September. That's just something we plan to do for the rest of our life. One of the things we plan to do for the rest of our life. Yeah. And we found that real estate was a very, very, very smart investment. I, I love the sentiment behind it. I feel like so many people out there want to do real estate because like that, that that's just how to live in paradise but I love that you guys have so much there's so much more connectedness to that goal than, than anyone else yeah, really ever heard and that's what we wanted to keep in mind because we like money of course obviously because I don't believe money doesn't bring happiness I think money is a part of it it's a tool to use yeah putting it's more than just the money it's the legacy it's rebuilding our name and it's leaving something on this earth for that's gonna help our families um, when we die it's gonna help our kids our kids kids you know something that can be kept built even when we're gone but um what do you think is a cause that if you were given like a huge sum of money and you're said to create it for some specific purpose. Maybe it's education, maybe it's third world countries, certain problems that they do. What, what do you think, what global or international or national problem do you think you would try to solve? Oh, okay, money? okay. Anything that would help the world in a better way, I would definitely look, look way more into. Or problems on, you know, mass incarceration, mm -hmm. Especially because of where my dad, or the position my dad was put in. Whereas he, he might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. His sentence doesn't reflect what he did or what he was involved with. So um, I would definitely direct um, the income more towards um, social problems, most definitely. Economically, racially, you know, whether it be shelter, hunger. What, how can we use social media to train people to bring each other closer together rather than farther apart, which is the way we've kind of been seeing in the past decade or two? I think what we're doing, you know, with YouTube and I'm not sure if you're on any other social media platforms, what we're doing could be considered directing social media more into it, uh, like a positive way. Because what I've been noticing and my, like my personal life is, a lot more people are drifting more towards, you know, the positive mindset and wanting to change their lives and living the lives they want to live instead of the lives that other people want them to live. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's probably just because I'm an optimist, but I think the way social media is going, I think it's getting better. There's obviously dents in it where the, the attention is more focused towards there. In my personal life, I see it getting a lot better because of people like us or you know Tony Robbins he's getting more involved with social media and he's you know Tony Robbins yeah he's amazing um, he's he definitely changed my life just from watching videos on YouTube just yeah. you know just stuff like that and a lot of people interact more towards video instead of like reading a long post yeah so they read because 
people's attention spans are getting shorter. Yeah, and I, I noticed this to myself, and I forget where I heard this statistic, but like a Facebook algorithm is that the things that pop to the top of your mini feed have picture or video in them. If it's just text, like it goes to the bottom. Yeah. And I even noticed myself, like one, I'm so much more likely to read the rest of a post if there's a picture with it. Exactly. The more people express themselves, the more they get out their comfort zones, the more they say what needs to be said, I think social media will definitely be directed more and towards a positive way. I say this with everything. It's a it's a mindset and it's the way it's your perception. So if you believe social media is going a negative direction, then it will for you. If you believe it's going in a more positive direction and more uplifting direction, then that's exactly what your life will be like. Like for me, my all my social media besides my Instagram, well actually my Instagram too, but all my social media is centered around influencers. That's all I see. I'll see like a, a nice little funny video here and there, but that's because that's what I allow on yeah. my social media. Yeah. So and they'll keep feeding you more of whatever you, it is that you see. Exactly. And all I get is influencers, uh, people like us from you know the Boston area, people around my area, wherever it might be, or more people who are more, more uh, well known, like uh, Ty Lopez, Grant yeah. Cardone. Yeah. Do you know who Ralph Smart is? No. Um, he's more involved on YouTube, but he's very spiritual, laid back, he's a vegan. People like that is what I try to surround myself around. You know how they say the, the top five people you're surrounded around reflect your average of, yeah. Well, I don't really find people like me where I'm around here, so. So I don't really, I don't really find people with my mindset, so the most I could do is majority people's time is spent on social media, so the most I could do is surround myself around positive influencers. Yeah, and and be the positive influence you want to see the world look down on you right? Exactly. Be the great YouTuber that you want to look for. Yeah, if I play basketball. I just had, yeah, I just had this huge impulse to ask you if you play basketball, and now I know what it feels like to be a short person around, like, tall people. Yeah. Because you just have that <laughs> impulse. Sense. Do you dunk on people, or do you dunk around people? Uh, the best dunk I had in high school, was it was a put it was a put back dunk oh, nice. over like four people. That's sick. So I've only done one put back ever in game. Yeah. I think that the other moments are when I do get frustrated from putting in a lot of time for something and not seeing the outcome is I start looking at why am I getting so frustrated or or why does it feel like I'm putting so much time and then I look to see where I can optimize. So I like I know I have a bad habit of saying um all the time. So maybe like a quarter of the time editing is just getting rid of ums. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> damn it, I did it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, one of the things I try to do is if I notice I'm taking six minutes to deliver a message, I know my mom's told me this like, I don't know how many times that they need to be shorter, is I'll really think about what my message is and then try to get it off in like a minute. I'll still end up probably two or three minutes, but I think the, the frustration of seeing less views helps me make a better practice. Because mm -hmm. then I just won't get as frustrated about taking a quarter of the time to edit because I had said um less times and I have less extra information yeah. and, and I get the video out in like 20 minutes instead of an hour and a half. Exactly. So, um, I just said um. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to start an um count in the corner. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Do you, do you meditate? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think, I honestly think that meditation has brought me a lot of uh, the ability to take a step back in those those tough moments. Exactly, I can't tell you how many time, how many things uh, meditation has helped me with. Um, I used to have really bad anxiety. Yeah. And I didn't, it's to the point where I just curl up in a ball and just you know, secluded myself from everyone. I didn't want to like, I didn't want any, have to do anything with anybody. And I just, I was just letting my thoughts like literally control my body. And uh, once I started meditating, I can't tell you how, how relieved and like, I could just relax, you know, I felt and yeah. it was, it was an awesome what, thing. What do you use for meditation? Do you use a guided like app or something? I use YouTube. <laughs> I, do, you, do you ever use uh, Andy, I forget what his last name is, but the guy that does Headspace? 
Or do you do like random ones all over the place? I, I do random ones, but the ones I focus more towards are, uh, have you heard of the Honest Guys? No. They're, um, I'm pretty sure they're like British, but um, I'll have to put that in the, I'll put that up here. Oh yeah. Right there. Right here. <laughs> Somewhere over there. <laughs> um, but they're the Honest Guys and um, that's their channel, just all meditation. Whether it's, um, whether it's like, I forget what it's called. You know, like the uh, the megahertz things or like the bi binaural frequencies. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, there, it's like, <laughs> it's it's like some advanced stuff. But there's these things called binaural frequencies, and it's like noises and frequencies that are supposed to like um, affect your brain waves and stuff like that. So they do mm -hmm. stuff like that. They do sleeping meditations. Um, sleeping meditation, like helping you to sleep. Yep. Um, morning meditations, relieving anxiety, motivation, confidence. It's a big range. They also have mindfulness one. One that I do mostly every day is a 10 minute mindfulness meditation. So I can always um, be aware and mindful of just life in general. How did you start with meditation? Because I read this book, I think it was like 10% Happier or something by Dan Harris, I think. And I, I got excited about it, and you're, you'll be listening to Tim Ferriss and the Tim Ferriss Show. No. You know what Tim Ferriss is? I've heard of Tim Ferriss, so. Um, so he has a podcast, and he interviews tons of successful people, and he said 80% of the people that are on his show have a meditation practice. Yeah. And at some point, I was like, I gotta do it, because <laughs> I'm sick of like not being a world-class performer. Like I want to be on that level. Yeah. And... I couldn't bring myself to, like, I'd, I'd do it, like, short little sprints of it, and then I would lose track of it, I'd lose the habit, and then it was gone. So I bought the Headspace app, for, it was like a $100 for a year subscription, because I knew I had to put something on the line or else I wasn't going to do it. Yeah, how do you, how does that work out for you? How do you like that? Well, I think I've put in probably somewhere between... 100 and 150 days this year that I've meditated. Let's see, so we're, what, a little halfway, we're almost halfway through the year. Yeah, I'm probably somewhere around like 120, 130, 140. That's awesome. It, it's hard to tell whether meditation actually makes a difference for, for you. Mm -hmm. I think it does. I have no idea sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that when I'm like still calm in front of the room when kids are screaming at me, that I'm still that that's because of meditation, but I don't know. How do you know? Um, I love answering this question. <laughs> but like I said before, it's all a mindset. It's all perception. So whether you believe something works for you or not, you're right. Whether you can or you can't. Exactly. You're right. Whether you can oh. or can't do something. Yeah, the Henry Ford, right? Yeah, you're right in both, in, uh, both areas. So whether you believe meditation works for you or not, you're right. And the way I explain meditation to someone is it's not just sitting, you know, in a lotus position with your eyes closed and your back straight. Yeah, not that's saying just, home. Not exactly. That's just... That's I try just, getting my students to, to meditate when they're like, yo, we're not doing that. <laughs> not doing that heavy stuff. <laughs> I'm doing that heavy stuff. But that's just, that's just one way. And... That's just one way of meditation, and the way I look at it is, there's no right way to do. It. There's no right way to meditate. Yeah. You'll know, you'll know when when it's working, when it affects your life. Yeah. And I came to that realization because I was in the same position you were when I first started. Is I tried to intense, like super intense focus on meditating, and it was frustrating me because. I was like, oh, I'm having a thought about what I'm going to do tomorrow or what I did today. Or no, no, I'm thinking. What I just said, I'm so thinking. Treated. Exactly. But the whole point of meditation is to observe your thinking. It's to allow your thoughts, but not to not at, let it cloud your judgment or your, your awareness. Yeah. So when your thoughts come, it's you just accept it for what it is. Observe your thoughts. You don't try to push them away. Right. Just let it run its course. And then just back right back to it. One thing that a lot of people say is focus on your breathing. 
Yeah. So when you have your thought and it runs its course and you're aware and you're observing your thought, come back to your breath and you'll be back in the meditative state. So it's just one major thing I could say is don't judge yourself meditating. Yeah. Don't think there's one right way to do it because there isn't. Be in the moment. Let your thoughts run its course and don't let that determine who you are because your thoughts aren't you. I know that was, that was one of my favorite discoveries. I, you ever heard of the Landmark Forum? Never. I did the Landmark Forum and that was, that was one of the concepts sort of that they get through to you is that you are not your thoughts. You're like the space that thoughts occur inside of. Exactly. And something I've come to realize is I control my thoughts, they don't control me. And that's one thing I learned through uh, mindfulness meditation is that any any negative or positive thought that is coming in my in and out of my life is because I'm allowing it to. So that's kind of a hard concept to grasp, mm -hmm. but it takes practice and hard work. Patience, hard work. Yeah. That's with anything, patience and hard work. So I think in regards to meditating, it's definitely, definitely changed my life. And I think as you as your practice continues, it'll you'll definitely see it change your life. Yeah. How how long have you been doing it for? A couple of years? Probably two and a half maybe. Nice. I mean I've I've messed around with it. Yeah. But um, recently, I've just recently, probably since last year, it's become a more consistent thing where I do every morning. And I've worked my way up to like 30 minutes yeah. straight. And then there are, there are some days where I, well, I just won't stop and then I won't do it for a while. So I have to work my way back into it with 10, yeah. with 10 minutes. And the way I look at it is even if you do miss a day, that's part of the meditation. Don't judge yourself. It's okay. That's the way I look at it, is like, yeah. you shouldn't feel obligated to do anything unless you want to do it. So if you miss a day, all right, cool, I'll just I do it later today, before I go to sleep, or I'll do it in the morning. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal, but if you do plan on making meditation a consistent thing, I wouldn't avoid it for long periods of time. Yeah. It's okay to miss it, but, because with my experience, when I, um, when I miss meditation for long, super long periods of time, you'll start to notice. I definitely notice. My mind and my thoughts become re restless. I'm all over the place, and you know I can't. Uh, it affects my character and how I act towards um, in front of people. And then I realize I'm like, shoot, you know, I need to regain myself and focus. And that one way is meditating. I like it. So for all you out there thinking about whether you want to meditate or not, uh, or or you're not sure, it can't hurt to try out a couple YouTube videos. There, I'm sure there's plenty of crap YouTube you're watching because you click the clickbait um, it, when you could be meditating. You might as well try it out for 10, 10, I think they say it makes a difference even just doing three days in a row for 10 minutes or something. I, I would start five to 10 minutes and then it would just work your way up. Yeah. It'll definitely make a difference in your life. What is your favorite Disney, Pixar, or DreamWorks movie off the top of your head? I'll give, give you a second to think about it. Just like one of those like inspiring like animated movies. Moana. Moana. That, yeah. that was my answer too. <laughs> it's really good. I love I singing a lot. My I love the song You're Welcome, but the video that um, I forget the singer's name, but him and Lin Manuel Miranda. Mm -hmm. I love rapping that part. <laughs> Moana. Moana was definitely the um, a standout film that I enjoyed. Yeah, fantastic. Let's see. What advice would you give to your middle school self? To my middle school self. To all my in this can be to my incoming eighth graders or my or the students that are gonna be freshmen next year. Wow. Um since that was six was, about six years ago for you. I would say be yourself. Find friends who reflect who you are because it's more than likely they'll be your friends throughout high school. If you guys go to the same high school, pay attention. <laughs> pay attention in school, because I know it gets, it gets boring sometimes, especially if you're going for a long time. Um, 
uh, an issue I had was definitely paying attention. Um, what kind of student were you? I was a quiet. I was a quiet kid. I read a lot. Younger, when I was younger, I was told I had ADD and ADHD. So the medication my mom put me on definitely affected my character. And then um, eventually, I was taken off it because it gave me all sorts of issues. I was a, I was a quiet kid. I read a lot. I was very socially. I wasn't socially awkward. I just wasn't comfortable. You're like A B C student. D, um, D student. I was B C D student. Yeah. Um, school just just came hard to me. When school gets tough, don't ever give up because it's. If you give up now, especially in school, it's going to affect you later in life. And I know, especially middle school students and high school students, they think that this is their whole life. Like their middle school, high school years, they yeah. this, that's all their life is. But yeah, I'm there's feeling that way. There's way there's way more to it. Yeah, your life you have so much more. Like when you graduate high school, you'll be 17, 18 years old. Let that render. Think how much life you had for 17, 18 years. Just think about what another 17, 18 years is going to bring. Yeah. So I would say enjoy your time in school. Don't yeah. Well, you don't have a ton of responsibilities yet. Exactly. Exactly. Because in you still live with your parents. You know, they provide for you, and um, you don't really have much things to pay for, you, especially like bills and stuff. You don't have a job right now, or unless you're going into high school, looking for a job, freshman, sophomore year. But one thing I would say is, you know, enjoy your time in school. Don't take it for granted because you're gonna miss it. I definitely, there are a lot of things I wish I could have done in high school, in middle school. Uh, and there's. A lot of people I wish I could have spoke to, reached out to, to, uh, towards to make more friends. Um, don't be afraid of being uncomfortable because the only way that you're going to grow is if you get out of your comfort zone. The way I look at it is this is your comfort zone, this little, this little hole right here is your comfort zone. <laughs> and then everything outside this hole is just potential, the world, everything you have yet to experience. Where the magic happens, right? Exactly, so once you step out of here, it's just, it gets better. I'm pumped that I got to meet this guy today. I'm looking, I'm thinking we're gonna have to do a dunk competition video to put on uh, my other For Fun channel. Um, oh, damn, another, um, <laughs> uh, I'll put, I'll put a bunch of the stuff in the comments, I'm probably gonna have to edit this down, because it's like a 40, 50, something minute thing, um, but I'm gonna try to get it under 10 minutes or so. So we're gonna, I'm gonna cut out probably a lot of stuff, but I'll keep the good stuff in. Um, but yeah, I'll put plenty of things in the comments. I'll put cards for, but you, this is at the end, so you've already seen the cards. Um, but yeah, you can count on that. And right up here, you can subscribe to Ty Speaks. I upload every three days. Every three days, so you can count on him every three days. Right now I'm doing uh, the Think Share every day, and during the summer I'm setting my goals for the day at the beginning, and then the next day I tell you how I did on those. Yeah, if you liked it, give it a like. If you want more, subscribe. Hey guys, stay weird. Get it? <laughs>